there, it's Kathy Chenna with Tri-Cities Community TV, and we would love to thank the Coquitlam Library that is located on the unceded territory of the Coquitlam people. My guest today is Ken Kuhn. He is the president of the Tri-City Seniors Action Society, and we're going to be talking all things senior and maybe some action. I don't know, Ken, but uh, you guys manage and take care of all of the Tri-Cities, Belcara, and and more. And previously, you were telling me that you talk about things to do with seniors, and it's all about seniors from everything from, you know, abuse to, um, I've even read recently, you know, um, heat awareness and advisories. You're always doing different kinds of things in the community for seniors. Can you tell me, like, why you got into this? And, I mean, the obvious is that I'm almost a senior and you are a senior. So tell me why you got involved and and, uh, and, and and why are you passionate about this? Because I see a lot of your newsletters out there and you're always making seniors aware of things that are going on. So explain to us a little bit about that. Well, Kathy, I got into it because uh, I saw some of the scams that were happening to my dad back in Nelson. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when I finished dealing with that, uh, writing a letter to the province and the Sun, etc., I uh, was contacted by uh, BCCRN, the B BC Community, Community Response Networks, mm -hmm. uh, to see if I was interested in doing some more work with that. And I said, yeah, sure, love to do that. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got into, you know, doing adult abuse awareness workshops around Tri-Cities. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll correct you one thing, I'm, I'm not president, I'm executive director oh, my apologies. of the Tri-Cities Senior Action director. Society. Okay, but, got it. Uh, so what we do there is trying to bring awareness of, of all the different factors that affect uh, seniors, whether it's, you know, healthcare, keeping them active, dementia, all the different things. So, you know, as you maybe have seen in my newsletter, I certainly talk on all of those factors and trying to, you know, even in the last one, I put, you know, things things to do uh, in the Tri-Cities, whether it's the, the free tree walks at River View uh, or Como Lake, the Coquitlam ones, uh, or going out to the free outdoor concerts, it's, you know, the Sunday concerts, right. trying to get people out and involved because, as you know, during COVID, it was uh, really isolating and, you know, people, stuck to themselves so like and right, people are very lonely wasn't it it was yeah, very lonely for yeah. seniors so we have to fight that loneliness and isolation get mm -hmm. them out and involved and and keep them younger and healthier and um, one of the things that we are unaware is like in the tri-cities there are 38 percent of the people who are over 50 mm -hmm. and that's like 40,000 people. Mm -hmm. um, there's only 32,000 people going to school in the Tri-City. So we have more people over 50 than uh, going to school right. uh, in the Tri-City. So we really need to, you know, have our city councils, uh, etc., governments of all levels, putting more proactive thought into age-friendly, thinking more for seniors and trying to Basically, I'm trying to keep all the seniors, including me, out of the hospital, mm -hmm. um, keeping them active. It's way cheaper. So when someone does, you know, need something of, of any age, there's room in the hospital. It's way cheaper that way. Right, exactly. I, I totally agree. What uh, would you say is some of the history of your organization? Like, when did you get started? Was it right after your father passed away, would you say? And, you know, what's been the reception in the community um, about you doing something like this? Because, you know, I know you belong to various groups. I belong to the um, the iHeart Port Moody group. And I know that it's quite um, active when you're posting things in there about things that are going on around town. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, the Tri-Cities Senior Planning Network started in 2012. I wasn't involved at all, and uh, and it was it was planning. And I, I went to a couple of meetings, and I you know there was maybe 12, 20 people there attending, and they didn't seem to be doing much. And I thought, ah, it's not for me. I, I'm more of an action, right. you know, person. And so I stuck with it. They had a transportation forum, and they had about 80 people out, and I thought, hmm, okay, well. I'm going to get involved, uh, and so I did. I got on their little executive, and I, you know, started to get things happening. So we had a, a housing forum. Uh, Isabel McKenzie came and spoke, and had about 250 people there. You know, so it started to grow, and so we put on numerous forums mm -hmm. uh, in, you know, each year. You know, whether it's uh, age-friendly stuff or 
health and wellness stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. trying to get the people out there. Right, right. And tell me about, uh, we talked earlier about grants and things like that. What kind of grants are, are seniors applying for? What 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 do they need? Well, the, you know, I've, I've been very lucky with the New Horizons for Seniors program. Mm -hmm. uh, and we mentioned Ron McKinnon earlier. Uh, he's one of the people who, you know, the, it's a federal government uh, grant program. And so he's one of the guys who, you know, you know, support me and I write a, a supportive letter, etc. Mm -hmm. So with our grants, what, you know, some of the projects we've been trying to do is, uh, you know, get information out to seniors put on uh, different events. Uh, one of them is to plan their advanced care planning, uh, trying to get that information to people. And it's called a green sleeve. It's like a bank book sort of thing that um, actually goes on, you know, Magnetic goes on the fridge and has all the things in there uh, to do with wills or how you would like to be treated if you can't speak for yourself. Right. So we had a program that would you know push that sort of thing, and mm -hmm. uh, other ones have been adult abuse information that we've been doing. We are currently um, our last New Horizons grant is trying to find people who are in. Uh, high rises who are maybe up, up on the 17th floor mm -hmm. and and of any age whether they're handicapped or on oxygen or whatever they are right. uh, if they if there's a power outage for two to say two weeks or uh, a serious emergency like that the fire departments and police departments are not able to help those people they're dealing with whatever the catastrophe is so if we can identify some of these people mm -hmm. who maybe are, are on dialysis or on oxygen mm -hmm. uh, and need uh, to get out every day, that will help, uh, you know, the, the fire departments, et cetera, to at least uh, triage those people right, to get right, them up first. Exactly. Are you seeing um, a, a, an uptick in, in sort of the abuse or the scams out there? And do, do people reach out to you? Like, do they say, hey, I'm not sure about this? Like, what kind of phone calls do you sort of field from, from seniors on a day-to-day -day basis? I get way too many phone calls, way too many emails of people who are in distress. They're being abused. Even the newsletter I just put out uh, a couple days ago, uh, a couple people who received that sent me a long email back and saying, "Oh, I'm being abused by my, by my brother or whoever it is," mm -hmm. and uh, you know. So, all I'm doing is with my organize or our organization is trying to bring awareness. Uh, we don't try to solve the problem. There are organizations like Seniors First BC that do that, mm -hmm. and so I, I basically put them onto those organizations right, right. who have trained people and you know they they basically work 24 hours a day they're in you know a hundred different languages uh, so they are people who could help right so you're you facilitate the problem yeah. you don't solve the problem and then you recommend where they can go to help solve their problem you know but you know our seniors like have you heard of some horrible stories out there that people are taking thousands of dollars from seniors and and do you know some stories of some seniors that have been scammed and hopefully by reading a newsletter or something of yours that you can stop them in that moment i know like my parents are seniors and my mom you know phoned me the other day and said uh, your phone's not working what's going on i said what are you talking about and she had gotten a text message from a different phone number that my phone wasn't working and she knows we have a password protected you know if we say the password Word, you know, then then that's that's what we have to use in order to protect her. And right. and, and she just turned 70 this year. So are, are you giving seniors like these kinds of tools that they also can use, you know, in the community if something should happen? Interesting that you bring up uh, the example of you and your mother. Unfortunately, most of the abuses that I've seen over the last 10 years, especially since COVID, have been brothers or sisters mm -hmm. taking advantage of their moms and dads it's true. It's true. moving into their own place. Uh, you know, maybe they lost their jobs during COVID. Uh, so they moved into the basement of mom and dad and they basically took over the house. And that's where probably 85% of it is. Yeah, and, and the financials too. Oh, they're, they're drawing money out of their bank accounts. I've heard of these stories as well. It's, it's financial yeah. and verbal, you know, yes, treating them yes. poorly. And that's why when I give workshops, I, I love to give them with RCMP or Port Moody Police. Uh, so we work as a team. 
uh, giving a presentation. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, they need to understand that we're not there to try and put their son or daughter in jail. We're there right. to help stop the abuse. And advocate for them, really, yeah. at the end of the day. Uh, what kind of workshops have you done in the past, and how many seniors do you think that you've affected and helped out during the years that you've been involved? I, over the last uh, couple months, I have probably been doing two workshops every week. Uh, and I, you know, my areas can be Burnaby, New West, Maple Ridge, Tri-Cities. So I'm busy, you know, doing a, an hour and a half workshops, maybe for Burnaby Neighborhood House or, you know, all sorts of different art organizations. Mm -hmm. and yeah, it's it's a, a lot of uh work trying to get the message out but but worthwhile and you know people will come up to me afterwards or contact me after and just say you know thank you very much i needed that information i'm going to pass it on mm -hmm. you know whether it's their next door neighbor or brother sister whoever it is yeah but. exactly and what about in the tri-city specifically do you know the number of seniors like you did say to me that you know a um, hundred to almost 200 people come out to these different events that are happening and and so on and so forth so on a month-to-month -month basis like how many people are you seeing would you say well with the the abuse workshops you know they they tend to be more uh, 25 or 30 people mm -hmm. and, and that's preferred that way you know whether yeah. it's up at Dogwood or Glen Pine or yes. you know something smaller because then they feel comf comfortable enough that they can speak out and maybe say their tell their story a right. little bit I, I basically don't want them to share too much in in the public but exactly. we can meet later yeah. and ga gather some a information. Delicate, a delicate discussion for sure yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So how um, are some of the ways that our viewers can, can help you and um, what, uh, what else would you like to share with us today? Well, we certainly have uh, a lot of events that we put on. One of the hardest things right now in the Tri-Cities is to find a location for 250 people. I always used to have Winslow Center, yeah. uh, the gym, and, and uh, some of the classrooms available mm -hmm. but now that uh, Hazel Trem Bath School yes. kids are in there yes. I don't have access to that right. so there's really no location and I, I, I looked at site B and the, that was exorbitant the price you know to rent that because we're a nonprofit and so and Wilson Center you know it um, or Coquitlam Community Center, I guess, is is the largest one, but it's it's still limited. And they've got their own uh, programs going on there, so it's hard to book them. And, and even when I put things on in uh, Burnaby, like Bonser, Cameron, you know, Rec Center, they, they're still limited. And and the people in the, in the Tri-Cities are really uh, seniors, really conscious of traveling the people from Coquitlam don't want to travel all the way over to Burnaby to Bonser no. uh, or, or vice versa. Or yeah. the people from uh, Pitt Meadows, Maple Ridge won't travel here. So no, they want to stay in their own backyard. They kind of want to, you know, not not venture out too much because they know home is nearby. If they don't like what they're where they're going, they can always just go home because that's a safe space for them. Um, one thing I want to ask you is, um, are you getting a lot of calls, um, if any, regarding housing and affordability right now? Like, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, the housing and affordability certainly is a problem. Uh, a lot of the seniors, uh, they're on fixed income. Mm -hmm. They maybe are in their own house if mm -hmm. they're in that situation. Right. But repairs take a lot of money. You know, if you're re having to redo a roof or, you know, things... Uh, things like that mm -hmm. that's very costly and and so seniors they're in their house but they don't necessarily have the the cash to do the repairs uh, and then as far as the people who are uh, rentals and uh, I mean the rents keep on going up mm -hmm. and uh, their pension is still the same that's right. and uh, and that's un unfortunate that we are having a lot of seniors and especially uh, going back to the abuse thing, when the sons or daughters have moved into the house and uh, 
or or been brought over from a different country to take care of the the young kids mm -hmm. and then once those young kids become teenagers um, they are the grandma and grandpa are no longer needed so they are basically said well you know time for you to move out and maybe they don't speak English they don't have some of the friends around right. uh, and so they're basically become almost homeless mm -hmm. they don't have a, a skill besides taking care of kids so yeah there's a lot of different situations but are not happy and healthy and people are over uh, you know 55 to 60 years old should be enjoying you know life and travel and all those things but uh, they're not certainly all in that situation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Any last thoughts for us at all, Ken? Yeah, one thing I, I do, I also recommend vaccinations for seniors. And I'm uh, working with uh, the health ministry and the senior, new seniors advocate, uh, trying to get some of that. And uh, some of us can afford the vaccinations, but some of it is, is expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I know the new seniors advocate is trying to get the shingles paid for, but a lot of us, a lot of us have already had the shingles uh, vaccination, mm -hmm. and you don't die from shingles. It's painful, but uh, people get into hospital with uh, influenza that becomes pneumonia, and they do die from that. From influenza, there's probably 5,000 people across Canada that die every year mm -hmm. from influenza and pneumonia related. So uh, just recommend that people go get vaccinated if that's what you believe and for your health and stay healthy. So Ken, recently I heard that you put on a World Fest. Uh, tell our viewers a little bit about that. It was uh, really interesting. Now we held it uh, in the front lawn in front of Glen Pine. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had about 30 different exhibitors uh, who catered to seniors and uh, had about five or six different uh, ethnic groups mm -hmm. that uh, provided different food tasting. Uh, so uh, of the 800 people who attended, uh, uh, people could go around and try, you know, the different foods from different countries. And that was all free. The whole thing was free. And uh, we also had, uh, I think, about 16 different uh, uh, entertainment groups, mm -hmm. whether it was Filipino drummers or mm -hmm. uh, Chinese uh, uh, fashion show. Uh, it was great. And so it, it was nice to have, uh, I think it was from 10 o'clock in the morning till 3 o'clock in the afternoon, mm -hmm. uh, all these different people, uh, again, 800 people, milling about it was great uh, 800 people wow yeah. that's amazing are you, are you planning on doing this again it it was done before by the city of coquitlam okay. and now uh, as you may have noticed uh, there's some things over in the farge that yes. are almost yeah, multicultural multicultural and, events and like so I, I don't want to compete with them but uh, one of the things that we're trying to do is make sure that all cultures feel included right. in the tri-city senior action society yeah that's great i i think it's important to do things for seniors about seniors you know it's it's more relatable for them you know you know it, it's very hard i feel you know for seniors to be attending things where let's say it's more like child driven or family oriented because they might be just coming on their own and that can be like a lot of um, overstimulation for seniors in, in some cases, you know. Um, with regards to that, you do have an AGM coming up. So uh, when is that and um, can anyone come to that? It's uh, October the 17th and yes, it's uh, right here at the Coquitlam Public Library okay, in the great. room right over there, room, okay. room 136, 137. Uh -huh. uh, and the information is in our newsletter, but it's basically from uh, one o'clock to three o'clock mm -hmm. and everyone's uh, welcome. We have, uh, I always, have, I'm well known for any events that I put on. I have tons of draw prizes. 
uh, $25 gift certificates and all sorts of swag. Mm -hmm. uh, and there'll be food and drink available, etc. cetera. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, do seniors, um, do they need to uh, have a membership to be part of your organization? Do they pay a small fee annually? You know, how, how does a senior get involved? I mean, maybe word of mouth or, you know, you can't just be fielding all of these phone calls and you, you do the newsletters, that's your way of communicating with them. And then they might, you might see them at the next event and things like that, but do they need a membership to join? So they can come out and uh, we encourage them to take out a $10 yearly membership. Right. Okay. And so when I talk about that, I say, well, you know, like you could come to an Elvis movie or the Death on the Nile movie or the Barbie movie, they're all free and you get a pop and a popcorn. You've got your ten dollars back already. Oh, for sure. Yeah, that's, and, that's and all great. the events, you know, that I put on with the draw prizes and the food and whatever, you recoup your ten dollars, and, and it's just. And, and some people say, well, it should be more because then there's more of a commitment. But I, I don't want it to be no, any more no. than that. It's, and what is your what, what what's the age? What's your threshold? Is it fifty and older, or fifty five, or how does that work? The, the threshold probably starts around thirty, thirty five, because they're caretakers of okay. seniors, okay. and I encourage them both to come out. That's uh, nice. So the information that that we share on whether it's dementia or whatever it is. Uh, it's important for all of them, you know, uh, so I encourage certainly uh, there's no, you know, we don't check your age as you come in the door. It's, it's, uh, well, everyone's welcome. Oh, that's great. Well, I'll be taking out my membership. Hi, everyone. It's Kathy Chenna here with Tri-Cities Community TV. You are listening to Ken Kuhn, the Executive Director of the Tri-Cities Seniors Action Society, where they educate, inform, and mobilize seniors. Now, you heard Ken speaking earlier. He is looking for a space to hold his events. If that is something that you have, please reach out to him uh, through his Facebook page. That's Ken Kuhn, K-U-H-N. I'm Kathy Chenna. Until next time, thanks for watching. Thank you.